are doing a catch clean cook in Indiana. A lot of this was filmed at night, so I do apologize in advance. There are some things you may not see very well, and we didn't have real great flashlights with us for some of this filming. If this is your first time stopping by, we put out videos every week, so like and subscribe if you'd like to see hunting, fishing, water sports, wild game recipes, knife making, and testing. Without further ado, check this out. All right, y'all, so instead of doing a traditional bobber, I am using a pole float or cigar float. I don't know, there's a couple different names. Uh, so what I've done is I have tied basically the same setup as a slip bobber. I've got my bobber stop up here. I've got a really tiny bead here and then a bigger bead and then the pole float. Now, normally you want to put another bead down here to protect your knot on your swivel. I forgot and I'm not doing that again. So it's not getting past that swivel. I feel comfortable. This is 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon. It's like a mix, I think. And then this is 20 pound mono. I've got a gamakatsu, I believe, circle hook uh, with an egg loop knot. Right now we're not using any baits that I need to use this egg loop knot for. It's there in case we need it. I think I just got a whole bunch of nasty ass stink bait on the GoPro. Be smelling that for forever. So these are these little fiber nuggets from Team Catfish. I'm trying them. They don't work in Tennessee where I'm at, but we're gonna give it a go here, see what happens. Still a little bit early. I'm gonna come out and do this later tonight too. I think we'll have better luck in the evening time when they're feeding more. All right, you guys got the hat cam. I got the crappie nibbles. We're gonna see who bites. Get a multi-species slam, hopefully, or nothing. Good boy. Are you a good boy? Oh, your pup's a good boy. You're just a big puff. So we had no catfish this morning, so we uh, reeled these guys in. We're gonna throw them back out later tonight, let them soak. We're gonna go see if we can catch something else. David. Hey guys, we got live bait on this one. We are slowly transitioning our cut baits and artificial baits to live baits as we catch them. This one was getting some action just a second ago. The biggest thing with circle hooks is they set themselves. So we gotta wait for the hook to really set itself and then bring it in. But it's getting some action. So we'll see what happens. So now we are gonna have to check that bait. Dude, I love this, David. I can hear the bell. So I went ahead and took the bobbers off. It's a gamakatsu circle hook. I'm gonna guess six aught. And the past two we've hooked through here on the back. This one, just to change it up a bit, we're gonna go underneath the spinal cord, kind of right above the anal fin. Let's put them out and see what we get. So see that weight there? You can still swim. Nice, but it holds him. And if you're wondering what we named this fish, this fish is named Reginald. I dub him Reginald. Reginald Fastidious the Third. Okay. Set our drag for the rod to bend over and ring the bell. Bend over, isn't he your friend? Man, there's nothing better than hearing that bell. I agree. Speaking of, get the bell on. Right now, we're this is an A dot circle hook, and it's just monstrous for uh, where we're fishing. I think there's only channel cats. This is great for flatheads, blue catfish, really, really big fish. But for what we're doing, we don't want a presentation that big. So what you can do is when you tie your leaders, you can do this at home or you can do it on the spot, is you can tie a figure eight knot and have just a loop here so that when you want to change hooks, you can push this through and change your presentation. Bring the hook through and then you're free. So now there's just a swivel on the end there. So we can put this down since we're fishing for something much smaller, I believe that's a 5 aught circle hook. Much smaller, we can put a small fish on this. Much better presentation for the channel kitties. And this is probably closer to 15 pound test line, whereas the other one I think was 20. And all you have to do, I'll just kind of pinch that knot just a little bit. Just thread that through. Grab the loop. And open it up. 
then take your hook, go straight through there, cinch that tight, and now we've swapped hooks with something that we prepped beforehand. We didn't have to retie everything, we didn't have to cut the line, we didn't have to start over with our swivel. We literally just unhooked that one and put this one on, and now we can fish with the exact same rig. It's really nice when it's really freaking dark at night. We're gonna go put a little baby bluegill on this, yeet it yeet. into the uh, sore weast, and see what we can get. Let's do it. Stay tuned. Ow, you got me. I will try to say it on film every time I do this. On the tip of your hook, these scales that come off, if you pierce a scale and it is sitting on the tip of your hook, it will prevent a hook set. If these little scales are sideways like that on the tip of your hook, you will not catch fish. So always clean off your hook point before you cast out, otherwise you risk losing fish. We don't want that. Losing your catfish, your target fish. Heavy rigs like this, we got a fish on, we got a pole float. It's best to kind of, you want to kind of bring it around gradually, but gain momentum as you go and kind of take a big giant step into it. If you play baseball, almost like a crow hop without the actual hop. So I'm going to put my, plant my right foot, look at where my left foot's going to go. I'm set. I take a step. <laughs> and that was probably about a 40 yard cast. Make sure the bail is closed. Put the bell on. And we going to work some. If you get a hit, if you hear the bell ring, it's not a bad idea to check your bait. Okay. We've been hearing it ring. I'm guessing it's a bait fish. We're just going to bring it in, take a look. Let's check it out. We might have a fish, Maddie. No way. No way. Yeah, buddy. It's a little one, but the little ones eat good. Dude. 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 We caught a catfish. We keeping him? Or oh, we're keeping him. The little ones eat even better. Really? With circle hooks, oh man, he is you just strong. twist out. We got a little eater. Cool thing about catfish, they can live out of water for days. Dude. Let's get another one. Let's do it. Let's get a couple more. This is fun. That's a fish. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. It's a fish. Oh, that's a good eater, too. That's a great eater. Yes. This is a bull cat. How can you tell? Channel catfish, if you look at that tail, see how it's flat all the way across? Yeah. Channel catfish will have a little divot in the middle there and his is flat all the way across. So this is a bull cat. All right, let's get another one. Fish. It's a fish. Did you just rip it out? No, it's gone. All right. We need to get these reset and get in the water. <laughs> Sometimes I record and I forget I'm recording and I just like put it out of the ground. I'm like, yeah. oh, shit, Dave's gonna have to watch that. I know, I edit your videos. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, baby, look at that. All right. Look at that, David. Yeah, I think it's a walleye. Dude. That's a walleye. Um, is that 15, is it 13 inches? 16. That looks 16 to me. It's 20 inches. Holy teeth. That's enough for a meal. All right, Davey, what are we doing? We're filleting. I have never eaten nor filleted a walleye, so leave your angry comments below. Leave your judgment below. Give her a rinse. That's a lot of meat. That's a good chunk, man. So the pin bones, you can see right here. Yeah. You just gotta be careful eating it after. There's the bluegill. That's awesome. Let's reuse them. Reuse bait. Look at that. That's what we caught him on. That is so cool. Dinner. Yum.
All right, guys, it is time. The best part about fishing is eating the fish. So for the walleye, what I'm gonna be doing is an ancho chili uh, panko breaded baked walleye. Um, Dave is gonna rock the catfish, do some fried catfish. It's gonna be delicious. So what I've done, I went ahead, I'm preheating my oven to 350 degrees. I've got a sheet pan that I've covered with uh, uh, foil and a little bit of non-stick spray. So we're getting that guy going. All right, guys, so I'm taking our panko breadcrumbs. Boop! And we got a cup and a bag. I'm gonna take one and a half teaspoons of our ancho chili powder. One. And we'll just eyeball a half. Hey. Hello. Don't mind me. After our ancho chili powder to the panko, we're going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of cumin and a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Shake to combine. Right, along with our walleye, we're also going to do some roasted asparagus. We're going to take this, put them on our sheet tray, take a little extra virgin olive oil, a little drizzle action, and of course, a little salt and pepper. Gotta season your food good. Pepper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this in for five minutes in the 350 degree oven before I put the fish in and let these asparagus get a little bit of a head start. All right guys, so we've got our walleye out. Now I did do a quick run on the walleye and actually on the catfish. Uh, that's eight cups of water, two quarts, three tablespoons of salt. And uh, I did a little hint of cayenne pepper to add just a little more flavor. Uh, but that helps, one, keep the fish moist. It helps keep like albumin and nasty stuff from forming when you cook it that comes out of the fish. Helps just make the fish taste better and be awesome. So give it a try. I'm not a chef really, so I just know it. <laughs> but works you good. were. This guy used to be a chef at Fleming's. Yes. So we want to pat these fishy foods dry. So now I'm going to do things a little bit different than Dave. I am not going to use an egg on these. We're baking it, not frying it. So it's going to be a little bit lighter. What we're going to do is dry these guys off like so. Then uh, I'm going to do a little salt. Bam. And then a little secret. We're going to take a little non-sprit canola oil cooking spray. And that's going to give us the moisture that we need for our beautiful panko breadcrumbs. Nice. Now we want to get these all on. And you really want to cover and kind of press it in. Press it in, press it in. Just tab it in, just tab it in. Alright, so now both sides are panko. We're going to let this sit until our asparagus, which is going to come out in just a minute. Um, and then we are going to throw those on, cook it for another 10 to 15 minutes until the fish flakes easily and the asparagus is cooked. It's going to be delicious. Alright, we got everything on the sheet tray uh, with everything good to go. We're going to pop that into 350 degree oven for another 12 minutes-ish. You know, take temperature your fish, check to make sure it flakes. I believe it's like 145 degrees if you want internal temperature. So yeah, we pop this in. It'll be delicious. So the other thing I've gone ahead and done about 24 hours in advance is I took about three quarters of a cup of uh, light mayo, uh, three or four garlic cloves, minced them up with salt, pepper, about two tablespoons of lemon juice, mixed it really good, and then I just let it sit so the flavors combined, and uh, made a little garlic aioli for our dipping sauce. And that'll be really good, a cool dipping sauce against the hot meat of the fish and the, the cayenne pepper and the ancho chilies in the seasoning. So. Thanks, Dave. All right, so timer just been off. We are going to check the fish. See if she flakes. She might need to go in a little longer. So it's flaking a little bit. I'm actually going to put it in just a hair longer. And that's why you need to always pull it out and check. Don't be afraid to adapt a recipe to make it fit your cooking. All right. Pull our walleye out. Should be good to go. Oh yeah. So I'm just eyeballing this right now. I got about, I don't know, half a cup of flour in here. I just put a tablespoon of 
straight Cajun seasoning in with it. I'm going to shake it up, just pan fry and see what happens. I think it'll be good. Whisk eggs. I'm going a little bit more on the flour, which means I'm going to add another, probably about a tablespoon. I'm going to do these in phases. I hope one egg is enough. So if your fillets are bigger, one thing you can do, there's these center lines right here. Really, Anything real dark red is going to have kind of a muddier flavor. So if you want to cut those out, it would be a good idea on a bigger fillet. Right now we're going to be adventurous and leave them on because we already don't have a whole lot of meat here. So we're just going to make do and see what happens and hopefully it tastes good. All right, we're just doing little bite-sized pieces into the egg first. That one was a oopsie. And then put them right in to your flour mix. Give them a shake. Get them all nice and coated. I don't know, do you want to do double dunk or see how one goes? I like double dunk, I like regular dunk. I like slam dunks. Another thing you can do to really make them a little bit more crispy is do 50% flour, 50% cornmeal. I like Dunkaroos. And then I'm just gonna go do all these real quick. So I added another egg here because we were getting low on the egg front. We're gonna go in for another dip. I also re-upped on my flour here. Using a gallon bag, it's a lot easier than this. But in the interest of not making more things messy, I'm making do. Double dunk. Get yourself some Crisco. We're not doing a deep fry, we're gonna start with shallow. And while that heats up, I'm gonna go ahead and give these guys a little extra sprinkle. There's still some wet spots, so it'll be nice to get some of that seasoning to kind of soak in. What are you sprinkling it with? Same thing, Cajun. Do it. Mm -hmm. Just for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, I just spit all over you. <laughs> That's amazing. You got me. We're gonna test our oil heat. Drop in just a little nuggy. Oh yeah. That's perfect. Can I get a close oh, up of this? That's So you don't crowd your pan too much. So I've got this on medium high right now. We're about one minute in, I just flipped all of them. Just flipped for the second time, we're at about three minutes. Leaving it a little bit longer so they get extra crispy. We do have them dunked twice, so these are gonna be like chicken nugget quality. Man, get you some nuggies. Now one of the nice parts about using a cast iron skillet for this, a couple reasons. The one I love the most is it really holds the heat. So as you add the fish in, right, it cools your oil temperature. And if your oil's too cold when you put your fish in, instead of your, uh, your water that is evaporating and creating all those bubbles, it actually pushes the oil out so it can't come in and soak the fish. Uh, if you've ever eaten something that's like really oily in your mouth, it was probably cooked in oil that was uh, at too low of a temperature. So, um, that's why you don't want to one overcrowd your pan, but we use a nice heavy cast iron skillet that holds a lot of heat. So as we add the fish, it drops the oil temperature minimally. Just gonna add just a tiny dusting since these just came out. Really, really light because it was mixed with the flour, and we dusted it before they went into. So you don't need to overdo it at this point. I'm not waiting for the second batch to come out. Oh yeah. Oh, that's delicious. That's really good. I was a little bit worried. I've never had bullhead catfish before. But I don't even have to fake it. That's good. That's no bull. No bull. No, it is bull. But no bull. Catfish nuggets. 
It's just one of the fancy new ones that this one does. That's not fancy or new. Man, look at that. We, so we only had two small catfish, but look at how much meat that provided. Do it. Dangler. Dangler alert. A little garlic aioli. Mmm. I can see why that's a sought after fish. What kind of fish is it? Walleye. Mm -hmm. I'm sold. I'm sold too. I like it has to become a walleye fisherman. I do like the texture. It's firm. It's meaty. It is very meaty. There's a lot to it. Yeah. I personally, I really love the egg wash and a, and a nice thick crust, but just showing different options for how to cook fish in different ways, depending on what you like or your, your health restrictions or any of that. Mm. This has uh, been a catch clean cook. We got some catfish, got some walleye. Stayed up entirely, <clears throat> entirely too late catching way these fish. Late. But it was way fun. Finally got caught up on sleep today. Slept in like two days later. <laughs> but this is delicious, guys. The walleye is definitely, I mean, you can feed your family with this fish. These little bullheads. There's a lot of meat that came off of them, but this recipe, man, if you're worried about a fish, this recipe Dang good, man. is really, really good. Thank you guys for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. Leave some comments. Tell us what we did wrong, what you do different, what yeah. you want to see in future videos. What recipes do you guys like? Share them. We'd love to take a look and see what everybody does with, with their fish and try new things. Share it. Thanks, guys.